What is up, everybody? Adam and Dan here with Cover Band Confidential, and we wanted to show you uh, a little project that Dan's been working on that kind of takes this whole song selection thing and really like turns it on its head. Dan, do you want to you want to go ahead and take the lead on this one? Yeah, absolutely. So, what I did, having a week off of work, was I took <laughs> I found an API that was full of uh, application programming interface, a way that you can talk to a system with a computer program and re retrieve data. And what I retrieved was the entire Billboard chart, actually just down to the 50th song, um, going back to 1958. Whoa. So every song, uh, every song position, it is, let's see, I'm looking at the database now, 15,000 songs. It is a little over 160,000 um positions weekly you know spots um and the idea is you know we have um as cover band people we look at these things to determine what songs are in there that ought to get played what historical stuff we just need to go look at um whenever i'm looking for song inspiration the billboard chart is a place i i go and so i look at gosh Got a lot of mid eighties because the mid eighties were amazing, but you know, what should I early nineties? What should I cover from there? So you kind of have a good range. And so I don't know about you, Adam, but I spend a lot of time as I'm planning set lists doing that. And I know you've you've invested pretty heavily in that data set yourself. Yeah, I definitely I've got all of the, you know, I, I run an eighties band primarily, and so I've got all of the, you know, top one hundred for every year of the eighties. Um, but the thing that I found is that the information as far as like charting goes doesn't necessarily tell the whole story and so you know maybe a song that like we consider timeless didn't necessarily go top 20 you know maybe like 35 but like still ended up being this kind of massive hit yeah so you did something in addition to just taking the raw empirical data to kind of like spice it up a little bit right point is really a very good one that you can't um the chart and anything you would derive from the chart is one data point and you also need to bring your own artistic wisdom and your own knowledge of music and all, and all of that this isn't going to solve the whole problem but it gives some very interesting insights into some data that is um reveals some stuff about the market um, let's just go ahead and start here i've lost my browser there it is um so this is the chart the basic chart um uh format for this last week and you know you can see that we have um 50 songs here walking our way down them and beneath that i have made this graph the the black line is on the current chart week that we're looking at and then it shows the charting history of every song on this week's chart and so one of the things you'd want to look for here is what's a song that's really lasted what's a song that's had some duration in the charts and the one that is just jumping out this week obviously is circles by post malone which has been on the charts since uh, September, end of September. Um, the other one that is loud and proud on the chart here is Blinding Lights by The Weeknd. Um, and you know, you, those may or may not be your style as a cover artist, but it's worth knowing that those are pretty darn big hits that are on the radio now. It's just a an interesting fact that if you were looking for something contemporary on the radio to cover, this would be a pretty good option. Yeah. I mean, if you, you know, using the Post Malone as an example, like you can see that that's like pretty linear, like top of the chart, like lasting power yeah. not a lot of dips not a lot of like major moves yep. it's much been like up there and like kind of running the show for a while yep. so yep and, seems like a and it's a really good song honestly i could totally see you covering the acoustic um and then this thing lets you walk backward weeks you know we're now back in july and headed back toward june so here we are june 27th and but the point is you know the, the thing to notice is that the this week line has now moved backward and again as we sort of drag the mouse down it you can see various songs and how long they've lasted there went the post malone right there it's at 11 this on this week that we're looking at then let's just say you wanted to look at my favorite year and let's say you wanted to look at june there's some real darn good weeks in 1984 those of us who were listening to the radio in 1984 you know most of these are familiar another thing that's really interesting is that looking at the patterns for the charts they're very different than they were oh, yeah as you know as the way that they are now absolutely right absolutely right one thing that really jumped out at me is that until just a few years ago these chart patterns made very clear arcs you know it was a very much an up to a peak and back down 
And then as you saw with the uh, with the post Malone tune that's that's still hitting this week, it's very much linear and flatter, and things are staying on the chart a whole lot longer. Um, at, by some quick math I did, uh, from the late fifties to now, it's about three times longer. They were averaging about seven weeks in wow. in fifty seven, fifty eight, fifty nine, and and like twenty ish now. In a minute, I'll show you some scoring I tried to do, uh, but I had to factor that in. I had to I had to compensate for the fact that things are just charting a lot longer now. Maybe that's a function of streaming. I think that's it. I think what you're looking at is you're looking at physical media versus digital media. Almost certainly. Um, you know, because all of these with the physical copies, you're actually dealing with distribution and supply chain and marketing because you have to like, somebody's got to go into a store and purchase a product. Whereas here, if you're a fan of Post Malone and you subscribe to a Spotify, all of his stuff lands in your feed the second it comes out that you can consume it immediately. So I think that's really what it, what, what it boils down to. The other pattern I saw is that years back, an album would come out and songs would chart in perfect six week periods. The song, mm. song singles off, it would drop in order, very much stage managed and planned by the, by the label, right? These days, an album drops. Yeah, no, no, it was, it was exactly how they were going to string out the sales of that album for as long as they could, right? Um, and if you didn't buy it when you heard the first album, first single on the radio, well, the second one might get you. Yeah, it's how that all worked. These days, an album drops and all of the singles from it hit the chart all in the same week. Um, this week, I, I, I don't have the data in yet, but it's Taylor Swift, her new album. This, yeah, it's like when Drake drops an album and he, you know, he drops a 40 song album and like he is the top 40. He's the chart. Yeah, totally. that's it. Totally. All right, let me dig into a little more that I that I've just analysis and work that I've done to to look at this data. So, just who's an artist on this who's been prolific? Who's somebody who's written a lot of songs? Um, you know, I feel like I should do some Phil Collins. So let me drill into Phil Collins here. Yeah. So you could say, all right, we're an '80s pop band, and we want to do, let's say, we want to do two songs from the following artists: Michael Jackson, Madonna, Duran Duran, Prince. You could literally go in and be like, well, these are the obvious ones to pick yep. based on all of these factors. Yep. Or, hey, this one's not obvious, but boy, I bet it'd kill. This is the yeah. second tier one that's not the obvious choice, but man, it's going to have that moment where you start the first, you know, play the first couple of bars and the whole room's like, oh my God. If we're talking Phil Collins specifically, like we, we would do, we did Easy Lover, hmm. which is on the list, but like towards the bottom of his first page. Yeah. Peaked at number two. In the air tonight, surprisingly, only peaked at 19. So, I mean, there, that's a perfect example of what we were talking about. Yeah. Well, first of all, tell the people how you did that. Like, what is the additional information you piled on top of the billboard information to kind of compile a more intelligent election process? Yeah. In the process of talking about that, I'm going to move over to the search page here. Okay. So, the search page is where I'm showing all of that. And the other data set that I added to the billboard data is from the Spotify API. And they have values like danceability, energy, speechiness, tempo, liveness, valence, which is like the emotional sentiment of, of a song. Yeah. So I, I came over, I, I made a big search engine that gives you the ability to search by keywords inside artists and song and, and certain end dates, and then give min and max values for those things. So here's Phil Collins. We have built this, all of these fields are sortable. The other thing that I have is popularity. So that's Spotify's popularity. If I sort by that descending, you can't hurry love. This is his most popular one followed by in the air tonight. This score value is mine. What I attempted to do here was to come up with a numeric value that expresses the overall chart power of a song. So there's some math behind that that is in some ways real clever and in some ways real dumb. Short version is I end up with a number that is kind of the sum of the positions over time. Um, but because of the change in average chart duration that we talked about a minute ago, if this crosses time eras, it's totally dominated by modern stuff, completely overwhelmed by modern stuff. So I had to build into that algorithm some math. I essentially divide it by the average weeks on chart for the year that that song is. Sort of try to normalize it to where it falls in that scale of, of, of growth of time. And then I ding you 20 points if it never hit number one. Okay. Just because it felt like I was getting a lot of eights at the top and that didn't seem right. But, you know, listen, here's in the air tonight. If you're going to cover a Phil Collins song, is it going to be You Can't Hurry Love? No, Probably not. No, it's going to be in the air tonight. But my score gave it a negative five. 
because it never it never hit number one. It peaked at nineteen. The the thing to note is from the chart data, I there'd be no way to know that in the air tonight is the song you'd want to cover. You, you just you wouldn't tell that looking at the data. No, the funny thing is, is that the one that was number one on the Billboard data is number three as far as popularity goes. Because Against All Odds was number one, wasn't it? That's right. Yeah. So yeah, that's just an interesting observation. So this is an opportunity to look at things and analyze them not only by the original chart position, but like a more modern uh, filter yep. as how timeless it is and how popular it has stayed over time. For sure. Now, let's say you wanted to knock out the ballots. You could yeah. put in a minimum danceability of 0.6. Ooh. Right. And we go from 23 entries to 12. If you wanted to build a set that was all 100 and 110 BPM, <laughs> we have the tempo that Spotify thinks it has identified algorithmically from the song. Let's go um, let's go one, 110 to 115. And we get Uptown Funk. We get Uptown Funk, by the way, has one of the highest scores in the database. I would imagine. Can't stop the feeling. Centerfold. Rock with you, Michael Jackson. So, you know, we're into that like kind of funk groove tempo. It's fascinating, man. It was really interesting to build. It was really fun. Yeah. So, you know, the, I think the question I have for anybody watching this is, um, does this seem valuable to you? Does it seem like it's worth investing in, in terms of standing it up somewhere that the public could get to it? Is it something that you would feel like you would be willing to contribute to the operation of? I think the real question is, is that, you know, where, what is the value of this? If you are a musician looking for uh, song selection ideas, I feel like there's value there. If you're a DJ, this is an absolute no brainer situation. Uh, I know that there are a lot of resources online for DJs as far as things like BPM and stuff, but I don't, I've never seen anything this sophisticated and this well researched and filtered. I just, I haven't seen anything like this. So listen, if this is something that you might be interested in or something that you think has value, let us know by hitting us up at coverbandconfidential at gmail.com or leave a comment below. We would love to hear your ideas and feedback and if this is something that you would be interested in checking out. Thanks for tuning in and we will talk to you later.